difficult to execute combination, even though it is very strong with Samira Rel. In the laning phase, you have to be very careful about overextending, especially against uh, someone like a Rakan. If you try to overextend and try to set up for those uh, track repel stuns, for example, you can find yourself getting caught and out traded, and then Kaisa snowballs a lane, and then you're like, yeah, a lot of ability to roam around the map. And it starts to get harder and harder to deal with if the tempo of the game actually gets out of your control. If KT Rollster start to lose out on some objectives, and really then they're fast in her own right. But the thing that worries me a little bit is that these lanes for T1 can have a little bit of trouble early on. And if Udir just kind of leaves them to do whatever they want. Here's a great trade, actually. Hybrid in a lot of trouble That's is going to have to about. use his heal as could have been engaged now onto Gumi's trying to trade it back. But again, just taking so much damage here. I mean, Rel is very all her nations because it makes it more difficult for her to just stably farm as, yeah. uh, goodbye. Uh, okay. He's gonna get that shield, thankfully, but I, I suppose you could say calculated, but, but that was not able to be as aggressive without that flash either. You're gonna see another rel attempt here going awry. Trying to get on top of them right now, but here's Blank, and Kari and Gumi Yusi totally baited into this fight. There is no hope for Gumi Yusi to get away from this one, as Kari even going to flash to survive. At the end of that, uh, up one v one, he's having a much better time on the Renekton, right even after having to go for an early back. Still having uh, a great time so far in that lane, up about 10 CS. Uh, Here we go, another engage their track, Repel, and Gumi Yusi in a bit of trouble this time, as the slow and the sleep will come in from blank, and they will absolutely have enough damage. Now trying to fight this underneath the Gangplank Ultimate, I don't think that T1 have the damage right now with Udyr in his, you know, current state this early on in the game. So just another great gank in the bottom side from KT and an avoidal, an avoidance, I suppose I should say, from yeah. the shock. Looks like it's just barely going to survive too, but oh, yeah. this is a disaster. Yeah, hybrid, he, he got baited into this one. He has no flash, and I don't know if he has a way out of this. He blocks all those projectiles, but that last shot will come in, and we got a bunch of TPs in the bottom lane at least. KT... We're going to try to turn this one around here as Doran will look to finish off the Rakan on the left side. Gumi UC will be taken out eventually on the right side. As an engage here in the mid lane, New Cal getting aggressive once again. Shockwave not even used one of those. And maybe even potentially take down this turret or force some TPs to come in. Rion 2, we got the Kaina Mirage to come out. And a full-on charm and so much damage underneath that turret. And yes, we do get that ultimate from Hybrid, but at the end of the day... Oh, he's actually going to try to trade this one around, but here comes LM to finally clean up. No teleport use from Closer. They just let the jungler slowly come up and take the trade. And at the end of the day, T1 do move ahead. Yeah, T1 definitely uh, having a really yeah, nice response. first mythic goes to hybrid because of this play. So, you know, you'll take these small advantages for KT, but you got to turn them into bigger ones. Closer does respond to the pressure pretty well. Blank is getting aggressive. He wants to continue this trade, and now Yukal finally able to jump into that back line. Picks off the Orianna without much of a hitch, so it was a three-on-one. 800, I suppose. Yeah, it's, uh, well, not even that. I mean, it's, it's like neck and neck right now. They're basically at the same amount of gold. Oh, yeah, I misread. I thought it was, I misread the number there. My bad. Yeah, it's like literally the same. It's like, it was like yeah. 70, not 700. <laughs> Zeus is going to be careful, you know, he's not on full health, he's going to try to get some of this before he goes for the engage. His engage is on the rally, you mentioned how important his role is in this game, and that is absolutely true. As we'll, we'll wait and see, you see T1 taking this very patiently, they just want to poke out first, carry up. Looking to get that flank angle, speaking of which... Where is the jungler, or rather, Yukal gets into that back line in a big way. Zeus, though, is immediately going to go down, and now these red health bars are falling. Hybrid all alone on the bottom side, not really able to find that damage. Yukal trying to go 1v3 here, and is actually kind of successful. Picks off two with his buddy Doran, and immediately KT able to pull off the end of that fight. In a big manner, you can see huge damage numbers kind of going unanswered. Now two and zero, most farm in the game. Doran again, every single game, every I swear, time. this guy is like desperately trying to carry his team. And he's so good at it every time. Uh, that uh, Zeus jump over the wall was very risky. Okay, here goes the shockwave. I don't have any follow-up. That's actually really <laughs> tragic. It was a good shockwave, um, you know, in terms of like how cool it looked and how much damage it did and how many people Back. I'm gonna go get the Drake for free. I'm not able to do that. Because they knew T1 was on the Baron already. They're going to try to split Yukal off by himself, but 
I feel like even with the vision control they have, this is just too risky. Teleport's coming through. This is so greedy from KT. They might get away with it, but it doesn't make it right. Now, looking for the engage. He bolts up two of them and immediately just chops them in half. That was, uh, I think, T1 they saying, oh boy, we got to stop this straight from happening and getting a little bit frantic there. And immediately they separate themselves and kind of do KT's job for them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the best way to put it. <laughs> They were like, oh, you want to take this crazy skirmishy fight where two of our members are going to get caught by the Yone? Oh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll deliver that to you. So now they failed to contest the Drake, and KT are going to go ahead and start this Baron. And there's no front line for T1 in this case. Sure, there's no Yone ult anymore, but I mean, trying to delay this or to stop this is, I think, a pipe dream. And Soren's going to go in, and the Baron's going to go down. Stun goes down on a Gumi Yusi who has to go over the wall. And you see the other two members are a bit zoned away. Sleep is going to go down on Takana. As they will look for that kill, not quite going to be able to chase over the wall. But they get the Baron to get a nice lead here. They're going to have a Baron power play. They're probably going to get about 5,000 gold, maybe 6,000 gold ahead here. But we're already past the 30 minute mark. As Zucal is just going nuts in this game, looking for any pick he can get. He sees enemy champion. He casts that ult and goes for the throat. Look at and you can see that immediately they're just going to take down these turrets and T1 have to back away. Yeah, Zeus is setting up for a follow-up stun there, too. He's like, okay, I'm actually going to, as soon as he pops out of Zonia's, I'm going to stun him. Really nice positioning there from Zeus. They're going to use the counter barrage to push this back. Or if they say, okay, we'll give you a second one, and then maybe we're going to fight over the soul. Because let's see how this one goes closer a little bit out on a zone here. And Yukal's going to catch him yet again. We do have the follow-up teleport and immediately rotations coming in from the side of T1. But they get zoned away in the river. The closer is going to have to back off here. Doran, tanky enough to sustain that damage. And it was just, again, kind of a frantic maneuver to try to get up to the top side. Low, so cool. he has that flexibility in late-game scenarios and doesn't just fall off, kind of like other assassins do, so. Especially when they get fit like this. You see LM, though, he's, he's looking for blood. They finally say, we want to fight on our terms, say T1. They're going to find Blank and Doran in the front line. Zeus looking for the flank here, but they are immediately going to take out that Lilia. Big engage now from Caria, looking for more. Doran's got a massive shield. LM has to be careful. Big follow-up engage now from Zeus as Caria is going to have to go away. And Samira is just doing way too much as the Penta kill, I think. No. Yone is going to steal that away. It is an ace in the end. And that is going to be a quadra. And KT will look to push and end the game. I mean, Yukal was very late on the rotation, but it just didn't matter. This was the one way I feel like T1 uh, could not play this moment, right? They needed to play passive. They needed to play around vision control and maybe trying to control a Drake fight. They saw Yukal on the sidelane. They thought, okay, we'll force this fight. Blank's Zonia's fought so much time. The damage output, even on Doran's Renekton alone, is putting everybody low on health. Yukal comes out on the flank, does a ton of damage, and then Hybrid pops his ultimate. That's the end of the story here. KT Rollstore are going to bring us to our first third game here in a telecom more than that in a very long time. Yeah. Terry and I are going to be able to do this alone. Just going for a bit of a walk. Wanted to take a fifth death. Not able to do much. As there you go, KT going to take down the Nexus. And I love the way that they do it. Very KT fashion. That skirmishy comp, UCAL pop.